Good day. My name is Alexander Hagen. I'm the CEO of a small, medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. Previously, I was a financial analyst, a financial analyst, and a financial journalist, and filed several patents as a telecommunications research engineer. Today's piece is entitled "One White Death Screams Louder Than Ten Thousand African Deaths." The uh, uh, fall of Bonnie Walid and the bitter harvest of ignorance and impunity. The last major stronghold resisting the new Libya has been re-entered by its worst foes. Bani Walid has a rivalry with Mizrata that dates back 100 years. The forces of Mizrata, who fought fiercely in the beginning of the insurrection, have been authorized by the government of Libya against all common sense to attack uh, uh, Bani Walid. Now, these forces, uh, just so you have a uh, visual on it, Uh, Mizrata is here on the coast, Bani Walid is inland, and they have a rivalry that goes back 100 years, a very virulent rivalry. And the forces of Mizrata were dispatched to attack Bani Walid. The consequence of this will become clear as we uh, move through this presentation. <clears throat> the Libya of today is a creation of Hillary Clinton. We are 100% responsible for the condition of Libya today. It was the United States that enabled the overthrow of Libya, which enjoyed the highest standard of living in Africa and most of the Middle East, protected women's and minorities' rights. Currently, blacks, women, and Sufis are all under assault, along with tribes that have uh, received the short end of the stick uh, at the end of the uh, NATO replacement of the Libyan government with a force that they believe will be more pro-Western. And it was indeed an autocracy and a police state in many ways. There was not much state violence. The Amnesty International reports annually generally don't list more than from zero to 50 people that were uh, tortured or abused. And uh, we have more than that here in the United States by uh, per capita. They had a very low prison population. Um, and But there was an iron discipline, which is perhaps why there were so few cases of abuse that are documented by Amnesty International. The previous government thought it had entered the comity of nations by disarming and surrendering and dismantling its WMD program in 2003 and releasing the ultra-conservative uh, jihadists in the Libya Islamic Fighting Group, about 300 of them, about uh, two years ago as part of a reconciliation process saw over by a consulting house similar to PricewaterhouseCoopers and Saif al-Islam. By late June of 2011, Sixteen months ago, the Libyan government was ready under the auspices of Musa Ibrahim and Saif al-Islam al-Gaddafi to have immediate elections. We declined and liquidated a large amount of their population, creating a nation deeply scarred by violence and division, which was totally unnecessary. So the blood is on Hillary Clinton's hands and can be shared by all NATO countries, Turkey and the Saudi and Gulf state petromonarchies, in particular Qatar. All of these provided boots on the ground in violation of the UN 1973. We said that they were special forces, but when you take all of the NATO countries, the thousand troops of Qatar at least that were sent, the uh, hundred or so of uh, Turkey, you're talking about just the special forces alone, uh, probably being over 2,000 uh, men in Libya, plus CIA. And Libya only had an army the size of the New York City Police Department. From now on, you will have all new material. Uh, this is a prelude, which I often cite. So when I describe what has happened, we, each of us, a small part of us, our humanity dies as well. For you and I are responsible for inaction and calling this for what it really was. If a party is willing to uh, sit for peace talks and we decline, bombing the country cannot be considered humanitarian, at best blundering, but most likely mass murder. Bani Walid has been fiercely assaulted on the anniversary of the slaughter of Gaddafi. The immolation of the men and women in his caravan, the beheading of his dreadlocked guards, and the summary execution of 67 of the men in the caravan who had been captured, which is now the subject of a Human Rights Watch report which has concluded and reported. But the blood sport was enjoyed by many. A U.S. drone called the attack in as the caravan departed Sirte. A French jet launched missiles into the fleeing caravan from the city of Sirte immolating the caravan, leaving us uh, charred blackened bodies still sitting in their seats. 
Syria was already a war crime site, as NATO had bombed in apartment buildings and hospitals in addition to other sites due to snipers' presence. The city was encircled and collectively punished. People leaving the city as refugees were abused, beaten, and arrested, if suspected of having sympathies for their government. No supplies were allowed in, so they were essentially allowed to have the choice of either starving to death and dying of lack of water, or leaving the city and being severely beaten, tortured, and arrested if their names happen to be on a list of people that might have been sympathetic to the old government. And today the blood sport returns. Thomas Gaddafi, the youngest son of Gaddafi, and the head of, I believe, what was called the 32nd Battalion, already severely disfigured. Um, had, was killed after capture in a crossfire, just like his father. Most likely he was executed in cold blood. Many, many civilians have been killed. He was thought dead. He was announced dead to hide him. And here is a uh, Al Jazeera report, which I will put in the headlines, showing the sort of damage that occurred to uh, uh, Bani Walid. We'll get to that in a moment. <clears throat> and uh, here's a picture of Thomas. Now, to give you uh, an idea of what it was like to be in Beni Walid this time, if you allow me. That's probably seared. Uh, it's horrific what's happened in Bani Wali. There were people brought in that looked like they had chemical weapons burns. And these are our people that we armed. Additionally, the spokesman for the Libyan government, who I found to be an articulate, intelligent man, a PhD, Musa Ibrahim, has barely survived the same uh, fate as Kamis. Here is what looks like fairly indisputable proof, if that is indeed Musa Ibrahim. I haven't analyzed uh, his facial features enough to be 100% sure. Apparently, he's been transported to Tripoli. Um, this one looks, uh, here we have the photo, so it's unlikely that it's uh, false. And I am very sad. I knew for a long time that Musa Ibrahim was probably in Bani Walid, and I never uttered a word about it, because the last thing I wanted to do was to help get him killed. Here is my prophecy from the day after Gaddafi's death. The ties to Al-Qaeda. The Miserata and their brigade I already told you about. And apparently the rumor is that his son Safe, along with the spokesman for the Libyan government, is a very wonderful, articulate man named Dr. Musa Ibrahim, in my opinion, are being transported to Mizrata. I hope it's another false rumor. My blood goes cold for me, Mizrata, for a loyalist is like Barad Dur if you're Frodo. And indeed, well, let's hear one last thing I say. <clears throat> They will be murdered violently. Any leader of the loyalists who falls into the hands of the Mizratans dies within hours. And this is exactly what happened to Gaddafi's son. He was captured, supposedly transported to Mizrata after being wounded, and died of his wounds, and they say died in a crossfire. He was executed in cold blood 99%. I want to give the Mizratans more benefit than they give their... Uh, victims and uh, and say we don't have uh, the information yet uh, but if he was severely wounded there is a hospital in Bani Walid the city had already been entered he should have been treated at that hospital and not transported to Mizrata 
So for those who wish to rewrite history and sanitize it of any objections to the NATO installation of what they thought would be a pro-Western regime, as this was not a civil war initially, it was an insurrection that's ultra-conservative, violent interpreters of Islam were armed by the West, the Libya Islamic fighting groups reconstituted members, and the Sunni petro-monarchies in violation of UN 1973, the very resolution we wrote, we organized and orchestrated all of this. For those who rejoice in giving Gaddafi an anniversary present of the death of his son and many of his supporters, will they reap a bitter or a sweet harvest? So uh, there is a good article uh, that was written um, by Mustafa Fatouri, who is an independent Libyan academic and journalist and winner of the European Union Samir Kassir Award for the Freedom of the Press in 2010 uh, to help us determine whether the purging of loyalists in Bani Walid through its bombardment and invasion was a good idea or not. Let's say that you don't have to listen to me. You can hear it from Mr. Mustafa Fetouri, and all of this will be posted in the comments. Save Bani Walid to save Libya is the name of his article. While mediation efforts are still going on, it's the last chance for the GNC, that is the government of Libya, to act wisely and correct itself by first annual its notorious decision immediately activate the long overdue national reconciliation process insists Mustafa Fetouri. Now this article um, is translated from Arabic so there may be an occasional uh, grammatical error. The siege of Bani Walid, 180 kilometers southwest of Tripoli, which had a population of about 85,000 prior to the conflict uh, has been in place for nearly two weeks now. It was publicly authorized, encouraged, and approved by Libya's newly elected General National Conference. I'd like to point out that the man who's running Libya now uh, is CIA connected, the one that they uh, appointed to be the, the head of the state after the murder of Chris Stevens, which is why I entitled this article, One White Death Screams Louder Than 10,000 African Deaths. Reports from inside the city speak of increasingly depleted supplies of food, water, and other necessities. Sporadic, indiscriminate rocket bombardments are daily routine, especially around the east of the city. Al Mardum Valley, the closest to the front line, have so far been under daily fire, killing five civilians and injuring a dozen so far. This was written a week ago. It's gotten much worse since then. Libyan rights groups join hands. Their international counterparts in condemning the siege, calling on the Libyan authority to lift it immediately. So he, even Libyan rights groups, in the current in Libya, you are not allowed to organize politically if you're suspected of having sympathies for the former government or be opposed to the current government. So these rights groups are not at all uh, uh, known publicly as being particularly sympathetic to the former government. Uh, they have called for the immediate lifting of this siege. Amnesty International in particular has been the forefront of calls to lift the siege and allow supplies to enter the city, as well as free movement of people into and out of Bani Walid. Home to Libya's largest tribe, the Warfala, Bani Walid has been the safest city in Libya since the war ended last October. The local population attribute this to the fact that no militias are able to enter the city. So there's no thugs around to brutalize you, extort you, kidnap you, beat you, or murder you. I'm, uh, you can, I hope, tell when I'm making the sides <clears throat> to enter the city from outside, and only its own people volunteered to protect it. They are organized in local defense committees in charge of daily security checkpoints on the outskirts of the city. Having seen what the revolutionary brigades have done to their houses, farmland, and other personal properties when they entered the city last October, locals were determined not to let any armed individuals to enter their city again. The rocky mountainous city is long accused of harboring remnants of the previous regime fighters and protecting its supporters. However, the fact is that the majority of people in Bani Walid do not want any militias amongst them. At the same time, they're welcoming any security forces from the central government. They, uh, weeks, in other words, the people of Bani Walid are not trying to reimpose a green revolution on Libya. They are simply trying to protect themselves and their friends. They weeks ago called upon the GNC to hand over, uh, when they were called upon by the GNC to hand over a couple of suspects, which the local social council of the city refused to do unless there is proper judiciary system and proper government procedures. 
It cited the kidnapping of over 100 Warfala civilians currently in jail centers in Mesrata and Tripoli, controlled by rogue militias. They challenge the government to bring those back home if it really can. Of course, nothing has happened over the last year or so, meaning the interim government lacks the means and authority to control the country, let alone disarm the militias still operating freely. This prompted GNC to issue its legally disputed Decree Number 7, authorizing the novice Libyan army to use all necessary means. Remember, that's the exact phrase that Anders Falk Rasmussen, the NATO uh, head, said, we will, use, uh, we will continue our operation until no civilian in Libya can be harmed which he didn't do because he didn't kill me. In theory, I could get a gun living here in San Francisco, fly to Libya, and shoot someone. He has to kill everyone on the planet to make sure that no civilian in Libya can be harmed. Probably sharks and tigers as well. <clears throat> All necessary means to control the city. By doing so, the GNC not only overstepped its mandate, but also committed the hideous crime of publicly calling for war against part of the Libyan population, which could well be officially authorized tribal cleansing. The bulk of the besieging forces came from Mizrata, with its long and deeply rooted hatred of Bani Walid. At the same time, almost all other revolutionary brig brigades, except the parts of the Islamists, have either withdrawn their fighters or refused to take part in the siege, considering it as illegal and unnecessary bloodshed against the entire population of Bani Walid. While mediation efforts are still going on, it's the first chance, it's the last chance for the GNC to act wisely and correct itself by first uh, annual, its notorious decision, immediately activate the long overdue national reconciliation process. By doing so, it will not only save Bani Walid, but kick start the process of saving Libya as a whole. Bani Walid now represents the last ditch that Libyans must peacefully bridge if they are ever to see peaceful and democratic Libya emerge after the long bloodshed and chaos that has been the order of the day for nearly two years now. Bani Walid today represents hope for the rest of Libya. It provided a good example in terms of self-governance, security, and self-management of the daily lives of its inhabitants, some of whom came to the city seeking security they lacked elsewhere in Libya. It also symbolizes the refusal of one tribe dominance of the country under any circumstances. Those who are leading the war efforts against Bani Walid are motivated by vengeance and hatred, but managed to portray the situation as a national cause. For while tricking GNC to intervene in legally and tribally complicated situation with dire consequences for the rest of the country. The siege must be lifted immediately and national effective government should be approved as soon as possible. All jail centers must be handed over to the government. GNC should quickly start drafting the constitution, which is its only task in the first place. Yet Bani Walid will not be subdued by force unless at a very heavy price of destruction and bloodshed it could further push Libya into more of the same. Chaos and suffering. Uh, so I think that pretty much concludes it. The only other th interesting thing I want to show you is this paper, LibyaAlium.com, is quite interesting. And they talk about something that I also mentioned at the beginning of the uprising, uh, which I think is important. May stand behind this phenomenon. External forces purely aimed to hit the stability and security of Libya to create a buffer between revolutions, Arab Spring in Egypt and Tunisia. Uh, Albin Mashrek and Maghreb, and perhaps manage these forces to exploit some Libyan youth enthusiasts or some belonging to the former regime to do the job, especially in light of the current security vacuum. I think that should pretty much cover it for today. My name is Alexander Hagen. Good night and good luck.